It's a little past that time of year where most coaster YouTubers post their updated top, insert number here, coasters. Though I'm a little late this year due to me doing coaster trips right up through the end of the year, I figured I should still post my most thuzy video of the year. That being said, I did ride over 100 new coasters since I last made this list, and I've gotten even more rides on many of the coasters that were already on this list, so a lot has changed. Keep in mind that this ranking takes into account both ride experience and my personal sentimental value towards the ride. Accordingly, there may be some coasters on this list that surprise you. Let's get started. 20. Phoenix Phoenix at Knoebels is a ride that really surprised me the first time I rode it. It's an older wooden coaster, but its big secret is those buzz bars, and man, in the front row specifically, you get some out of control, crazy airtime. This ride is just plain fun, and it will leave you just breathless from the amount of airtime you'll have. Uh, it really throws you out of that seat, and at one point, my belt line was above the back of the seat. It really feels like it shouldn't be allowed. Uh, but it's definitely fallen a bit in my rankings now that I've ridden more and more coasters, but it's still a super awesome wooden coaster. That's always guaranteed to give a good and enjoyable ride. 19. Candemonium at Hershey Park Candemonium was a new for 2020 B&M Hyper at Hershey Park, and you can never go wrong with a B&M Hyper. They really are fun and enjoyable rides, and this one really reminds me of a couple other hyper coasters that are higher up on this list. It's not the longest ride in the world, but it is really enjoyable. It does have a few weaker elements on the ride, which is not it's not as high as some other B&M hypers that we'll get to in a minute. However, it's still a very fun ride with some very strong floater airtime moments, especially that first camelback and second camelback. Super fun ride. 18. Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at Six Flags Over Texas specifically. I would include the St. Louis version and most of this stuff does apply to that one, but I found that ride to be just a little less intense than the one at Over Texas. This ride starts off with a reverse launch out of the station and up a inverted top hat. Following this, there are some overbank turns and a vertical spike that reminds me a lot of an impulse coaster, except a lot better. Following this, you go through the whole layout again forwards. A ride like this is just something that you would never see built today. Just the way it works and the way just the way the ride experience is is something you just won't ever see built again. And it really is a unique and interesting and also super fun and intense ride. 17. Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure A lot of people don't seem to like this B&M Hyper, but I personally really enjoy it. It's not the newest B&M Hyper, and because of that it doesn't have the strongest airtime like some of the newer Hypers have. However, it still features some really good airtime, especially on those first few hills and on the return trip back to the station, which also offers a great view of the first drop, uh, which really looks impressive from that angle, and I really like when coasters give you that view, as we'll see with a lot of other coasters on this list. Uh, not only that, but it also features a really tight helix before that mid-course break run, which gives some good positive Gs. Not to mention, this is one of the few B&Ms outside of Universal and Cedar Point that's still operated with three trains consistently, and it's operated well. Nitro is an awesome ride, and I try to ride it every time I go to Great Adventure. 16. Maverick at Cedar Point this one really doesn't need any explanation. For a long time, this was actually my number one coaster, and it's still a super fun ride. I just feel like I tend to get dragged onto it with a lot of family and friends that visit the park and want to ride this thing, and ever since Steel Vengeance opened, its lines have been extremely long. That being said, it's still a great ride, and it's a really enjoyable one that I try to ride at least a couple times every year at the park. This ride also has the honor, if you want to call it that, of being the only non-aero major coaster I've worked. I didn't really work it, I was getting trained there, and then it being an Intamin broke down and I did not finish training, but I did at least get to move some trains around, which was cool, I guess. 15. Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City This is a ride that completely flew under my radar. I really didn't follow the construction for this thing back in 2018 at all, and I really was not expecting much from it when I went to Silver Dollar City a few months ago. However, this ride completely blew my expectations out of the water. 
In the back row, you go down that 90 degree first drop and you could be facing just about any direction because this is a spinning coaster and it is just incredible. It's easily one of the best first drops I've ever experienced on a coaster. Following that is an awesome layout filled with inversions, twist turns, and two launches, and all of that while you're spinning. It's just such an out of control and unpredictable ride. It's super fun, and every ride you get on it is a little bit different. I really had a hard time deciding between this and Outlaw Run for my favorite coaster at the park. I don't know what the hell happened, but Mind Blower is like so good. 14. Mind Blower at Fun Spot America Kissimmee. Remember when I said that sentimental value would play an important role in this list? Well, this is a prime example of that. I had ridden Mindblower when I made my last list, and if you'll remember, Mindblower was not on there. However, after my most recent trip to Florida with some absolutely amazing people and one amazing night, actually multiple amazing nights at this park, this ride shot way up in my rankings. This park at night is something else. It really cannot be beat as far as an atmosphere by any other park I visited this year. However, Mindblower itself is a really fun ride. That inversion just feels so jank and kind of falling out of your seat as you half twist and then complete twisting over that station is just such a weird and enjoyable feeling. Following that, there's some really great overbank turns and some powerful airtime moments. Another thing with this ride is that I originally hated those restraints, but once you figure out how to ride with them, they're actually really good. The thing with these restraints is once the, station, once the train leaves the station, they actually cannot come down any farther. That means that if you get a little bit of room in the station, you have no need to hold up that lap bar. It will stay exactly where it is, which is really, really enjoyable and makes for this ride even better. It really is such a great and underrated ride that you really should not miss if you're ever in the Orlando area. 13. Montu at Busch Gardens, Tampa. I will admit, I did not have the highest expectations going in for Montu. I really didn't think any B&M invert was going to be able to beat Great Bear or Raptor, but man did this ride not disappoint. I had no idea a ride could pull so many positive g-forces, and so quickly too. That's really the big thing with this ride, it's not so much sustained positive g-forces, but quick snaps that really catch you off guard. Specifically the exit of that Batwing, I think is the name of it? I'm not quite sure, I'm not enthusi enough for that, but it's like a trench element you pull out of, and as you're pulling out of that element, you just get such a whip of positive g-force, it really catches you off guard, and that's right before the block break, which is actually a valley point on this ride, which is kind of surprising. But the second half of the ride actually takes place a lot of the ways underground, or at least in a trench, which is also really cool and adds to that ride experience even more. Montu is such an amazing ride, and it is my highest rated B&M invert. Welcome. <laughs> 12. Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. Phantom's Revenge is pretty much everything I like in a ride. It's got that Arrow first half, which is of course nostalgic, and I of course love it because I'm an Arrow simp, what can I say? And it's really enjoyable climbing up that lift hill and getting nice views of the park around you, and it takes its sweet time getting up there, but once you drop off that lift, it's not Arrow-like at all. It is all brand new Morgan track, and you really don't feel any sort of roughness at all. What you do feel though is a lot of airtime, because this ride has some really stupid restraints that shouldn't be as freeing as they are, but you can just get so much airtime and it is really hard to get stapled or whatever you want to call it on this ride because of how those restraints are, at least if you're a smaller person like me, and you just fly out of your seat on every hill. Not to mention this ride has some great moments where at least I like it, I know a lot of people don't, where you get thrown out of your seat and then quickly forced back down into it. If you're not ready for it, this can actually hurt either your back or your arms if you slap them into the train. Uh, I know that happened to me the first time I rode it. However, if you're prepared for it, it's just crazy fun and crazy stupid how fast the ride is going towards the end of the ride there. I know originally it actually had problems overshooting that brake run, which is why it ran one train its opening year, and that does not surprise me at all. So this ride is really incredible. Uh, definitely a must ride if you are in the Ohio, Pennsylvania area. Coiled and ready to strike. 11. Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. I originally rode this ride back in 2018 and thought it was really, really good. I recently had the chance to re-ride it just a few weeks ago and it's actually gotten slightly better. 
Originally, it would slow down at the crest of the lift, but that feature has now been removed, and it now full speeds, full sends, straight down that first drop. And let's just talk about that first drop. It's a twisted first drop down the quarry wall, which just gives some incredible airtime and again is one of the best first drops I've ever had on a coaster. It's super fun. Following that, there's some nice bank turns and airtime hills before going up into a zero-g roll and back on the quarry wall before you drop back down one more great drop and then through the quarry wall before the ride ends. It's not the longest ride in the world and that's why it's not any higher on this list. However, the elements it does have are really, really good and it's one of my favorite RMCs I've ever done. Also, those restraints are a lot better than the newer RMC trains, at least for me. The lap bar just doesn't come down as far and it just... It, feels quite a bit more enjoyable and open than the newer RMC restraints. Overall, this is a fantastic ride, and it is my personal favorite coaster at Fiesta Texas. Skyrush, our 12th coaster. 10. Skyrush at Hershey Park. When I originally visited Hershey Park back in 2019, this ride was down all day. However, when I revisited this last year in 2020, the ride was open and I finally got to ride it. And this really is a strange ride. It has those lap bars that I know a lot of people call thigh crush lap bars. And I see how they have that kind of reputation. They definitely are very restrictive and they do come down on you during the ride. But if you brace your arm to hold them up or you just aren't too bothered by them, they won't crush your legs too bad. However, I can see how it is painful for some riders. However, getting past the painful lap bars, this ride is really weird. It's got a cable lift out of the station that's reminiscent of Millennium Force, but I feel like it's at least a little bit faster, but I could be wrong. Following this is just the most intense layout you could really ever think of. This ride is one of the few rides out there that legitimately tries to kill you. It's got those airtime hills that are very strong, very sustained ejector airtime, and then some turns that legitimately, especially in a wing seat, really try to throw you out of the ride. It's really like no other ride out there. It's definitely a ride that everyone should ride at least once. I know it's very controversial, but personally, I really like this ride. Once a sleepy whistle stop, founded when the Iron Horse made its way westward. 9. Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point This is just the definition of a ride you could ride all day long. That's assuming it didn't have a line, which isn't going to happen anytime soon, unless you catch it on a really rainy day, which at that point the ride would be running so slow it wouldn't even be worth marathoning, but I digress. Anyway, this ride features a lot of pops of semi-strong, semi-weak uh, airtime that aren't... It's not the most intense ride in the world, which is why I don't rank it very highly. It's really its main feature is those pops of sort of strong, sort of weak airtime that are all throughout this ride, and unfortunately it doesn't feature much else. And that's why I don't really rank this ride that highly compared to a lot of other coasters on this list. However, if that's your thing, if these quick pops of semi-weak, semi-strong airtime are your thing, then you are absolutely going to love this thing, and I cannot take that away from you. It is it's still a very good ride, it's just not what I like in a coaster. The length of this ride is also a huge positive, considering it's probably one of the longest coasters as far as ride experience is considered on this list, and that definitely adds to it as well. It's a fun ride that everyone should at least get out there to try for themselves. 8. Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere This coaster has to be one of the biggest surprises I had this year. I really did not know what to expect going in, but wow, was I absolutely blown away by this thing. It is an amazing ride. That first drop down over the bridge, down a ravine, over a bridge, is just so unique. It's so different from any other ride out there. It's got a lot of pops of really good airtime, as well as some good positive forces and a 90 degree overbank turn. It's also definitely a wooden coaster. It feels alive and it really does change from ride to ride. I personally prefer a back row ride where I found you could get a lot of airtime and also <laughs> there was uh, some ride operators on platform that we nicknamed Softy because she would gently tap the lap bar and even if it went down a click she would apologize but that led to having a lot of room on this ride and we were absolutely flying out of our seats it was such an enjoyable time there was also one time where the lap bar went up a click interestingly on on my seat uh, on the back on the load side blue train back seat uh, I don't know why it went up I've heard other people I know airtime thrills had the same thing happen to him 
either way, it made the ride even better. I, I definitely cannot complain. I guess it just slipped a ratchet or something. It's not a big deal. But uh, it that's such an incredible ride. I have so many good memories of just marathoning this thing because it did not have a line at all on a semi-rainy day at Waldemir. And this ride just made Waldemir one of my favorite parks I've ever visited. And it's definitely a must visit if you're ever in the area. If you ever visit Cedar Point, this is only two hours away. Definitely, definitely check out Waldemir. This is Captain Michaels again with a final message before you reach launch elevation of 287 feet. Thank you again for volunteering and for your contributions to the Orion sequence and the citizens of Earth. Good luck. Seven, Orion at Kings Island. This is the second new for 2020 coaster on this list and it's actually quite controversial a lot of times. I personally really like this ride but a lot of that does come down to the theming. I'm personally a sucker for anything space themed and Orion has such a great area and queue mixed with that awesome I'm a score soundtrack that you're hearing now. This ride also has quite a bit of sentimental value for me, as outside of Cedar Point, it was the first coaster I rode in 2020 and it really signaled the end of the lockdowns and the start of the coaster season. It really was an amazing time being there for that first rider event that was so awesome, being able to ride this ride over and over like that. I personally really like the ride experience too, that first drop, especially in the back, really is incredible, and the rest of the ride doesn't disappoint with a speed hill that really reminds me of a lot of Intamin rides. And of course that giant airtime hill which reminds me of a good B&M Hyper, like the one we'll get to in a few moments. It also has that helix which pulls a lot of good positive Gs, followed by a nice head chopper element underneath the first drop, and then that nice weird air off axis sort of airtime moment heading into the final break run that really is surprising and I definitely did not expect it to be there. Uh, this ride operationally is also a little bit different, being one of the only non-consign B&Ms in existence. Uh, that's not something you'll really notice as a rider, but it definitely is very weird if you pay attention to the operations of this compared to, say, Fury or Leviathan. Overall, Orion is one of my favorite coasters ever, and you should definitely plan on riding it in 2021. Imagine the tallest, fastest, meanest double loop roller coaster in the world! Six. Shockwave at Six Flags over Texas. Yeah, I bet you weren't expecting that one, and I'll be honest, neither was I when I first rode it. But in the back row, this ride is like no other ride I've ever ridden. Those first two vertical loops are really impressive and pull a great amount of positive Gs. Specifically in the transition upwards into the second vertical loop is where you'll hit your maximum amount of positive Gs, and that's upwards of five Gs. It is very intense and not like anything on a modern coaster. Following that is an airtime packed layout that I never expected to see on a ride like this. Those hills trans transferring down off those turns, especially from the trim slash mid course and into the following turn over the station and then that airtime hill afterwards, all of those hills are packed with great ejector airtime moments. And people like to say Magnum has triangle hills. No, this thing has true triangle hills. They really are sudden and powerful moments of airtime that really catch you off guard. It will make your thighs hurt if you're not careful. It really is surprising and I did not expect it to be near as good as it was. Also, we met an amazing few people working this ride that day and that definitely added to the experience as a whole. We even got them to not stack trains, which is quite difficult to do with the ride's current block setup. That being said, this ride is incredible and you should definitely make your way out to Six Flags Over Texas as long as this ride is still standing to ride this amazing, classic Schwarzkopf looping coaster. <laughs> Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. This ride really did not look like all that much watching POVs before I visited. However, I was absolutely blown away and this is my favorite RMC coaster. It features a first drop that is just as powerful as the one on Iron Rattler and the rest of the layout is amazing as well, featuring lots of good positive and negative g-forces as well as some weird laterals that really don't make a lot of sense, but are really fun. There's also that barrel roll at the end of the ride that is just such a crazy way to end a ride like this. It may not be the 
smartest design long term, especially with valleying. I can see that as being a major issue. However, it's still very fun, and as a rider, it is awesome. This ride also has some of the strongest airtime I think I've ever experienced on a ride. It definitely is reminiscent of the airtime you'll find on something like El Toro, which we'll get to later on this list. And considering that it ripped my phone out of a cargo pocket, and yes, I did not get it back, my phone is somewhere in Outlaw Run's low zone, so if you find it, let me know. Um, it is still gone. Uh, definitely makes me understand why rides like El Toro and Steel Vengeance have those no phones in line loose article policies, because clearly cargo pockets are not secure at all on rides like these. And that is astonishing to me, because I never thought that would be an issue. What's, I've never had any issue with it before. So I can definitely understand those policies now. But this ride is absolutely incredible. It's got some nice theming too when you leave the station, uh, which you heard at the start of this, and it just fits the ride so well. It It's just such a well done ride. Even though it is an RMC, it feels a little cheap, a little, little cost cutty in a lot of places. It still feels like a good ride, and it is definitely my favorite RMC, without a doubt. Four, Fury three two five. I've not ridden this coaster since summer 2017, and I would love to change that at some point, but from what I remember, this ride was amazing. It's got that awesome first drop that's definitely one of the best on any coaster I've ever ridden. It just feels like it goes on forever. Reminded me at the time of a drop tower, but I've ridden a lot more drop towers since then, so we'll see how much that compares. Overall, I definitely need to get back to Carowinds to re-ride this thing at some point so I can form a new opinion. But I do remember liking it a lot, and I do remember liking it a lot more than Maverick, which was my number one at the time. And I think the reason for that was, one, it was a longer ride, but also those airtime hills were very reminiscent of Maverick. They have a lot of sort of strong floater to ejector airtime, and it also had some good positive forces that you don't normally see on rides like these. So I definitely really enjoyed that, and of course the sense of speed is like no other ride you can really find other than some other giga coasters. It's a very fun ride that I definitely look forward to re-riding in the near future. Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. This is my definition of a perfect roller coaster. Starting off with that queue line that is just gently themed perfectly for the area and it fits in perfectly with the rest of SeaWorld Orlando. It also has this amazing soundtrack that you're hearing right now playing throughout and it just sets the tone for the ride so well. Once you get up to the station you have a nice theme station and a ride set up exactly as B&M would intend. It's got no seatbelts and a nice rolling block setup. Once you actually board the ride, the ride experience continues with its streak of perfection. You climb that lift hill with lift hill audio playing as you climb the lift. And this is such a good idea. I don't get why other coasters don't have this. It's so cool climbing that lift hill and having that customized audio playing as you climb closer and closer to the top. Once you drop off the lift hill, you have some nice moments of positive G's and some nice moments of extremely good sustained negative G-forces. Quite strong actually, almost ejector airtime as you're flying over those massive airtime hills. It also has a speed hill which is very different for a B&M and gives a good pop of ejector airtime. The ride itself is pretty much perfect. It also, oh, almost forgot to mention, it has a off-axis airtime hill before you hit the final brakes, which is so weird to experience on a B&M Hyper like that. The ride itself, though, has really never given me a very bad ride. I've only had good or great rides on this thing. Most recently, I did get a minimum verification ride, meaning the lap bar was the highest it could possibly be for the ride to be sent, and that was one of the few times on a coaster I genuinely thought I could die. It was absolutely crazy, and it, it takes a lot for a coaster to actually scare me, and that, that ride definitely did. <laughs> I came back shaking. It was incredible. Such a good ride. I love this ride. It is so perfect. Everyone should get out there and ride Mako. Two. 
El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. This ride is absolutely incredible from a ride experience standpoint. It's got that cable lift which offers great panoramic views of Six Flags Great Adventure which can be a good or a bad thing depending on your view of Great Adventure. Following that with an amazing first drop especially in the back row that is just the start of the crazy airtime on this coaster. Also each of the valleys in between these crazy airtime hills is packed with great positive G's. So you get great negative G's followed by great positive G's followed by great negative G's and so on so forth for the first two hills which is exactly what I love to see in a coaster. Following that you have a nice turnaround which is not that rough contrary to what some people would like you to believe. Following that you have some nice little airtime hills that aren't near as crazy as what you just experienced but still provide some good negative G's. If you have a little bit of room you'll definitely feel yourself floating up on those little bunny hops. Then you have a nice turn with another head chopper moment, following that up with the famous Rolling Thunder Hill which does provide some pretty great ejector airtime, much like the hills before it. I don't think it's quite as strong, but it's still very, very good. Following that up with probably what's the most underrated part of the ride, and that's these twists and turns that are very Maverick-like. It really is underrated and I don't hear a lot of people talking about these, but I personally think they're just as intense if not more intense than the ones that are found on Maverick, and this is done with just lap bars. This ride is very crazy, especially if you get a little bit of room. It is just unlike any other coaster I have ever ridden and it's going to take a lot to bump this coaster any lower than my number two. I love this ride and it is the reason to go to Six Flags Great Adventure. Magnum XL 200 at Cedar Point. For those of you who know me, this should be no surprise. Those of you who do not, I worked this ride in 2020 and it was already, before I worked it, one of my favorite rides. But after working it, it is no contest number one. This ride varies a lot from ride to ride. No two rides are really the same. And having ridden this ride both very fast and very slow, I can say that very fast rides are something else. I don't know if those very fast rides alone would have contributed to it being my number one though. The sentimental value of working it and also the theme of the ride definitely adds to it a lot. So let's get into it. Once you get up the stairs into that nice 80s station, you hear this amazing, awesome 80s synth space themed uh, music produced by Zone Tripper that the ride got in 2019. It is genuinely, I know I'm biased, my favorite ride soundtrack. It plays in the station and it, it I listen to it even off work. That's how good it is. Having heard it all summer, I still want to listen to it. That's just, it's so good. Go listen to it. It's linked to the description. Once you actually board these nice, weird, <laughs> very 80s uh, aero trains uh, with lap bars and a seat belt, um, just, you know, do yourself a favor. Tighten that seat belt a little bit. Don't make that lap bar too tight or it might hurt a bit. And then you dispatch from that station, roll out kind of slowly because Aero didn't believe in drive tires, um, and climb up that lift hill. Takes about a minute to get up there. Having walked up there several times, very fun. Uh, definitely recommend walking up Magnum's lift hill. Very fun time. Get some great views from up there, whether you're walking or riding. Um, once you get to the crest of that lift hill, uh, you drop off. That first drop I never thought to be that good before I worked it, but after riding it so many times, I found it's actually pretty darn good, especially if you stare up at the top of the second hill as you're dropping down. You drop down, reach quite a high speed. It feels real fast when you're at the bottom of that hill, um, and you get some good positives. You climb up into that first turning airtime hill. You get some airtime if you're up in the front. You tend to ride more in the back these days, but... Um, drop down off that hill and get a nice view of the lake into the first tunnel and into the speed hill which is my favorite element on the ride. You get some great sustained ejector airtime over that regardless of how fast the ride is running. And then you hit the trims which will either make your ride fun or really fun. You then fly into the pretzel turn which has some good positives and some good laterals. It could be a little rough if you're not prepared for it but at this point I am pretty much know every bump and jolt on that ride. Then you exit the pretzel and go up into the second tunnel, which has a small airtime hill in there. Following that, you get another airtime hill and then an off-axis sort of hill that provides some weird laterals. It's not the most fun hill, but it definitely changes things up a bit from the airtime and positives. You then fly into the airtime alley, which is the most famous part of the ride. 
This element, this stretch of elements is very fun and you get some great shots of ejector airtime over each of those hills and then very strong shots of positive g-forces at the bottom because these hills aren't just triangular upwards they are triangular downwards which means that it's some spine crushing positives when you get down to the bottom of those hills you also get an amazing view of the first drop having walked down there you get a great view down there as well but you can get the same view from on the ride or at least a pretty similar view from on the ride if you look up towards that first drop and it just looks so impressive then you enter over the camera hill and then into the final third tunnel. And in that third tunnel in 2019, it was upgraded with on-ride, I, I don't know if you'd call it on-ride, but an audio track that plays in there when the train enters, which actually there's multiple different ones that play, which is kind of neat. You can see if you got a rare one or not. Um, and also fog and lighting effects that play in there that are super cool. Definitely did not have to add that to the ride. It would have been great without it, but it just adds that little bit more to the ride experience that makes it awesome. Uh, you then fly up into the safety brakes where you're either going to come to a full stop if you're on three trains and people are being slow, or you're going to roll right through it. Um, three train being set up there definitely hurts quite a bit. It's probably the most painful thing I've experienced on a coaster. Um, <laughs> maybe. It might be a little bit worse that I've experienced. I, nothing comes to mind, though. Uh, but that usually doesn't happen. You'll roll right through and into the ready brakes and into the station. Uh, I worked it this year. Uh, we were 2020, not this year. I keep forgetting. Um, and we were unfortunately only on two trains all season. Hopefully we can change that next year. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Uh, but even on two trains, it was still a super fun ride to work. Uh, got so many stories from this ride. So many great people. If anyone from Magnum Crew 2020 is watching, you guys are all awesome. Um, thank you. For a great season and i hope that i can hopefully be at this ride next year we'll see what happens but that does about round out this video if you want to hear some more stories from magnum maybe we can make that its own video sometime uh, we'll see we'll see if there's any interest but thanks for watching and we will see you next time Bye bye